Hey, what's up coaches? This is Ben Neighbors from Make Money Coaching Sports. Today is January 1st, 2022, and I wanted to create a audio podcast here, and I'm hoping that if you're a coach that I you're working with me already or maybe if you're not working with me, I think these 5 lessons will help you a lot in 2022. Um, Some of these things are things that I've been already practicing within my business and within my life. And I know how helpful they have been for me. So I wanted to share these with you. And then some of these things are common problems that I see with coaches within their business or within their personal life. And if you want to take out a pen and a piece of paper I'm not going to try to drag this on too long, but with it, with each example um, that I show you here, I'm going to try to give you more context behind each one. And that's because I think what you hear from me today is probably the opposite of what you will normally hear on the internet, right? And this is coming from someone who has uh, 13 years of experience having a business, right? So take out a pen, piece of paper, and let's get going. So I have these listed out one through five. They're not in any particular order. I actually think probably the the two top ones are number one and number five. Um, The other three are really important though. So number one I have here, it says get more sleep. If you're well rested, you'll have more energy at your sessions. You'll have more energy and creativity with your marketing. You'll have more energy when you show up to sales calls when you are a tired person no one wants to be around you right and your clients will feed off of your energy level and also the quality of your sessions are dependent on either your energy level or the coaches that you bring on their energy level so the way you have more energy is by getting better rest getting better sleep and the thing that i hate about what a lot of people say on the internet is they'll say, oh, you need to grind it out. You need to stay up till two in the morning. Um, don't sleep. Like, these are these are very foolish things. Like, and the reality is if you have less energy, your business is going to do worse and you're not going to enjoy your business when you're tired all the time. So I think a good thing that you could do is just have a sleep goal and be like, all right, Every night I want to try to average this many hours. So then you should determine from there, well, what time should I go to bed? If you know you want to wake up at a certain time. I don't encourage you to do what I do. I mean, I go to bed pretty early, but I also wake up very early. Um, I wake up around, at this point, I wake up around six o'clock in the morning, six to 6.30. That works for me. Uh, I go to bed around nine or 10, all right? That works for me and my wife. Like, not telling you that you need to do that. But I will tell you, 2021, this past year, I got way more sleep and I could see how that impacted my business and just for me, personal day-to-day life, all right? You're gonna be more enjoyable person to be around when you get more sleep. If you're not getting sleep, I can tell you, you're gonna be more stressed out, all right? And a lot of that too has to do with like what you're eating, what you're drinking, Um, throughout the day stuff like that so be healthy get more sleep number two this is something i've been talking about for years on youtube those who do this always have a better business those who don't do this are always more disorganized here's what it is you plan the night before all right so before you go to bed you're planning what you're doing tomorrow morning and throughout the whole day hour by hour and the reason why this works so well is because most people when they wake up in the morning they don't know what to do and business owners need structure like if you just wake up in the morning and you don't know what you're doing you're going to make up things to do that day and then you're going to be working on things that don't matter if you're working on things that don't matter then you won't see any improvement within your business so this is why it's good to be clear on what you need to work on and what times you need to do that. And the cool thing about it is when you plan out your day that way, when you wake up, there's no distractions because you know what to do. And second, you get more done with less hours. 
And third, you'll have more free time in your personal life. And that's because you can set up rules and restrictions within your day. Like at noon to 1 p.m., I'm not going to work because I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to go to the grocery store or I'm going to go to this appointment or I'm going to go run outside, whatever it is you want. That can be on your to-do list. So when you wake up, you have that structure. And I will tell you that one of the biggest problems that coaches have, it's not going to be uh, lack of business knowledge or uh, ideas or stuff like that. It's going to come down to executing what they planned out the night before. I've been doing this for years now. I can tell you how beneficial it is. It is hard to do. Um, it's hard to do that for like a week straight because you'll get lazy. You'll be like, ah, well, I'm in a good routine now. I know what to do. But no, if you spend five to 10 minutes before you log out of work and you write down, this is what's happening tomorrow, then when you get to tomorrow, it's much easier because you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you will be lost. And if you're lost in, in a business, you expect to see zero growth, right? The next one here, and, and I want to give you actually just real quick on the second one. There are coaches inside of my uh, program that have been posting their daily schedule straight for the last three years, right? Three years. Go If you go back on YouTube and you look at uh, one of the testimonials we have, there's a guy named Thomas uh, Kiley. He's from Ireland. He grew his program from 12 students to 150 students. If you were a part of my program, you would see him every single day. He's filling out his daily progress planner, <laughs> right? That works, right? It keeps him organized, all right? And it will keep you organized. So that is something that um, I'd highly encourage you to start doing that and don't just do it for a week. Do it for the rest of the year. Like make today the, the start of that. And if you're having problems with that, come back and listen to this episode and just get it done. Like you, everybody has five to 10 minutes of time at the end of the day where they can just sit down, not distracted, and just do it. And last thing I'll say about that is I'm working on a planner, and this is for coaches that are within sports. So I'm working on creating a planner that we're gonna launch, I think, in the summer of 2022. And I think you would really, really like that. Um, it's gonna be really good for people who wanna get organized uh, with their day-to-day -day coaching. All right, number three. This is probably one of my favorite ones on here that I've implemented. I started implementing this in 2018, and I did that because someone told me to do it. <laughs> and I'll tell you to do it too which is stop saying yes to every business opportunity, right? Here's the thing. When you have a business and other people in your area know about it, people will always want your time. They'll always ask you questions like, they'll, they'll say, hey, should I start this business? Or hey, how do you think I could get clients? Hey, you'll be looked at as an asset by people around you if they don't have a business. So what you should do is you should really guard and protect your time. And I used to say yes to every single meeting. When, when someone would text me back in the day and there were a core group of people that would do this, they knew that I would openly just meet them at Starbucks for an hour or two hours or three hours or four hours to talk to them about what they're doing. Now, I'm not saying that you just need to be completely selfish with your time and never meet up with anyone. But what I am saying is you need to do a better job of protecting your time and start saying no more often. Because when you do that, you can say yes to the things that you're doing because your time is exclusive, right? Not everyone should get your time. And one of the things that I learned um, that I was taught is if someone really wants to meet with you and you want to take that meeting, then you should send them a payment link and they send you x amount of money of with the amount of hours that you're going to be meeting with them for and we'll see who's serious about that meeting now all right so for example all right it'd be good for you to take a step back like if people are always wanting your time take a step back and say all right well how much is my time worth for an hour if i'm going to meet someone at a coffee shop is it a hundred dollars is it a thousand dollars is it three thousand dollars is it five hundred dollars I'm not going to determine that for you, but that would be something you could just write down 
And then when people want to meet with you in the future and try to pick your brain, all right, you just send them a payment link and say, hey, I'd love to meet with you at 10 a.m. this Friday. Go check your email right now. I just sent you an email. Um, once you check that out, let me know if you want to meet me on Friday. <laughs> and then the email will send them to a payment link where they pay for your time. And that way, when you meet with someone, you're getting paid for your time, right? It, they should not just be able to um, pick your brain for the next three or four hours. Now, I, I'm saying that purely because I know the trap that coaches get in sometimes. They think it's really cool that they have their own business, and then other people think it's cool, so other people want to learn from them. So I'm telling you, like, yeah, it's cool that you have your business, but don't just like waste time talking to people. And here's the other thing that I've learned with this. When you meet with someone one-on-one -on -one and you're giving them your one-on-one -on -one valuable time, if you do it for free, 99.999% of the time, they will not do what you tell them to do. <laughs> All right, I've seen this happen to me and it's frustrating because when I meet with someone and I am answering questions, things that I've already experienced, things that will help that person, if they don't execute on those things, then it makes me mad, right? Now, if someone wants to meet with me, if they pay me and they don't execute, well, I'm not mad. That, that, I don't take that personal at all because they paid for my time, right? So you can see the difference there. That is something I would want you to pay really close attention to. And the cool thing is, you know, by doing that, you might make an extra three to $5,000 this coming year by saying yes for, to people who do want to invest and pay you for your time, right? And that's the final thing I'll tell you with that is it will weed out tire kickers, right? Weed out tire kickers. People who really want to learn from you, they will pay you. And I think you'd be shocked how much they would pay you um, if you, you can solve a problem for them, right? Next one. Again, this is something, it's, it's common sense, and people either do this or they don't. Like, there's, there's no middle ground, which is stop getting distracted, right? Your phone is a tool for creation, right? That is a tool to market yourself. It is a tool to make money in your business. Your phone is a tool. Your computer is a tool. You're either going to use it as a tool or it's going to use you. And one of the most common problems I see that coaches have is they spend too much time on social media and the time that they spend on social media, they're not making money. They're spending time on social media scrolling, getting jealous of what other people are doing, um, getting distracted, DMing kids that will never pay them. Like, you know how much time you spend on your phone because if you have an iPhone or, I mean, it doesn't matter what phone you have, you can go see how much time you spend on your phone daily. And what you should do is you should do the math and be like, well, if I'm spending two hours on my phone per day, how much money am I making from my phone per day? Right? If you're not making any money from your phone, then stop using it. Right? And this is why you should be using your phone to be a content producer. You should not be consuming a bunch of people's stuff all the time. And I would even say that about me. Like my videos, my uh, podcast, my emails, all that stuff is meant to help people, right? And I know that there's a lot of people that consume that every single day, which is great, right? But I don't consume a lot of other people's information, right? I'm going to consume other people's information if I know it's helpful for me. So if my stuff is not helpful for you, then stop listening to it, right? <laughs> um, if it is helpful, keep listening. Hopefully, like, you know, it helps you a lot. I mean, that's my, that's my intention. That's my goal. But you should take the same sort of steps I've taken, which is say, like, well, be a content producer so other people can start listening to you and, and you can start to be an authority in the space that you're in, right? If you're just consuming stuff all day long, right, then nothing, nothing really is going to change that much for you this year, right? Like, and that's one thing I started doing this last year. I stopped listening to a bunch of podcasts that, um, that I used to listen to. And that's not because I don't want to learn. It's because like when you listen to too much stuff, you're going to get information overload. All right. So I started to minimize the stuff that I listened to, um, by a lot. And I can see how mentally, how much that's helped me. All right. So stop getting distracted. If you're going to use your phone, it should be a tool. 
and the internet should be a tool for you. Don't be a slave to it, right? Everybody in the world right now is a slave to it, right? So limit your time with it, use it as a tool, make money with it, stop, stop fooling around with it, stop scrolling on social media, stop getting distracted. Like you would be so surprised with how well you can do in your business if you're really disciplined with your phone and you use it for good, not just for scrolling. Last one here, number five, all right? This would be one, if you haven't written anything down or if you haven't been taking notes, this is the one that moves the needle, I think, the most, all right? If you do the four things above here, this fifth one, I think will make the biggest difference for you in your business, which is have higher standards, all right? Have higher standards. So clients will always meet you at the standards that you set. I will tell you this, all right? I have no shame in saying this out loud. Right now, I talk to at least three to five coaches, new coaches every single day throughout the week, at least, sometimes more. Like the other day, I had nine hours straight of Zoom calls, all right? I talked to nine coaches that day, nine new coaches that reached out to me from YouTube, people that we reach out to on Instagram, um, coaches that text me or email me through my email list. I talk to coaches all day long and I can tell you like I at this point I know what coaches smell like <laughs> right I know what they're thinking I know what they're feeling I know how low some of their standards are I know what their pricing is I can know these things before I even talk to them to most of these guys I know how organized or disorganized they are within the first 10 seconds of a phone call right and I will tell you the vast majority of coaches out there don't have standards Right, let me repeat that. The vast majority of coaches out there don't have standards. So this means the clients that train with them dictate the standards, right? And this is because a lot of coaches are shy with confrontation. And a lot of coaches don't want to ultimately be the business owner. They want to just be the trainer that's liked. And here's the cool thing. You can really be liked by people and still have high standards at the same time, right? But when you have low standards or you have no standards, and I and when I say low standards, that is like that equates to no standards, <laughs> right? So if you have low standards or no standards, you will attract terrible clients, right? And I can promise you right now, if you're listening to this and you're thinking of the top two or three kids that you train that are hard to deal with, the top two, two or three parents that owe you money right now, or they're a pain in the butt. It is not because of them. It is because of you. And I know you don't want me to say that to you, but that's the facts. Like, it's your business, right? Like You let them into your business. You could kick them out of your business right now when we get off this call. And that is what I would encourage you to do when, or when you get off, not this call with me, when you get off this uh, podcast. When... You, like, you could easily, seriously, call each person and say, hey, I am resetting my standards in 2022. This is what we require. Can you meet these standards? All right? Tell them what the standards you're setting. Don't just say, I'm raising my standards and not say anything. <laughs> you need to tell them what you're changing. And if people are like, no, we don't want to do that, great. Get them out of your business. Like short term, that might hit you financially. Long term, you're not thinking about them anymore. You're not dealing with them. You don't have that headache going out to the session. And if that if you're in that situation, right, you will feel drastically better when they're no longer in your program. I've seen this happen with people who have literally like around 100 to 200 clients. They will cut 20 to 30 people in one day. I have seen this happen with people with coaches that have 20 clients. And they'll cut like six or seven in one day. Financially, it stings. But guess what? The ones who stayed, the ones who are all in, that are bought into the, the, to the higher standards, think about how much better the referrals are going to be now. Think how much better the new clients will be when they're committed to your program for a longer period of time, when they're showing up early, when they're doing the homework, when they're doing what you want them to do. right? So you can change your standards whenever you want. For example to like join my coaching program now. Like my standards have gone, have gone up so much 
over the last six months, right? And that's because I I needed to have a reality check. There were a couple of people who got into my program that were difficult to deal with. And I was like, whoa, why were they difficult to deal with? And I was like, is it them or is it me? And I was like, no, no, it's me, all right? Maybe my standards weren't high enough to weed out that type of person. Now they're a lot higher. So it's harder to get in, right? Why is that? Well, I want to I want to work with people that I know I want to work with, <laughs> right? I want to uh, be able to wake up on Monday and look at the great results that our clients are achieving, right? I don't want to be working with someone who isn't doing the work, who isn't following through with how we have things set, and someone who's not meeting my high expectations. So that's why you know our our expectations have changed. So I'm telling you to do something that I'm doing currently, right? And when you have these high expectations, all right, two things will change. Number one, you will have more enjoyment training and being around that client. Number two, when you have higher expectations, all right, it's a combination. You attract better clients in the future and you can charge more for what you do because you are more professional than everyone else in your city. And I see this, I see this with coaches. Coaches that don't value themselves, right, normally have very low or no expectations. Coaches that do value themselves, they value their time, they value their service, they they have maybe a little bit more experience. They have higher expect, expectations and they're able to charge more. And they're able to charge more because they can match that with their expectations that they set for clients. And the thing is, is committed people, committed parents and kids that you train, or kids that you train, they are attracted to someone who has high standards. Parents that invest money into someone, they want that person to have high standards. If they see you that have, like, they, they see someone have low standards, like if a wealthy client approaches you and they're like, wow, your standards suck. Like, they, they wouldn't even want to pay even if your program's cheap, <laughs> right? They'd rather pay you two to three times the amount if your standards are higher. So this is why I've seen this across the board. When you have higher standards, you, you end up making more money. You end up uh, enjoying working with your clients more. And it's better for you long-term to do that, right? Long-term, when you have that set up, it is so much better for your business. You are way more secure with your business when you have higher expectations, all right? I hope this was very helpful and valuable. Now, if you listen to this and you and I have never connected before for some reason, uh, text me at my phone number, 210-960-5771. At this point, we have three different levels of our program. And that is something I actually just changed yesterday. So we have three different levels of our program. There is a, a more affordable way now to get our help um, inside of our consulting program. Uh, we have a middle tiered option, uh, which is a bigger investment. And then I have a uh, really big type of investment opportunity for coaches um, if they want to have lifetime access to what we do. And that also includes in-person meetings um, down in Texas. So if you want to learn more about what we do, um, reach out to me, text me at 210-960-5771. Shoot me a text there. I respond to every single text message. Um, I've never not re responded to anybody. So if you text me and you've never texted me before, do it today. Um, if you've already talked to me and you want to learn more about the three options that we have, um, if you haven't joined our program, shoot me a text and uh, I would love to chat with you. Um, I hope you have a great year this year. Uh, wherever you're listening from, thank you for tuning in. It's been really awesome to see how our YouTube channel has grown over the past year. Um, there's coaches from all over the world now that we've been able to work with and I feel very blessed to have the opportunity to do this and I'm going to work very hard uh, this coming year to improve what we do on YouTube. I don't know if you've seen the last couple of videos, but I'm going to look to raise the quality of all the videos that we post this year, um, raise the quality of the content. I'm going to be interviewing uh, coaches worldwide that already have a business, so you'll be able to hear from them too. So this is going to be hopefully another year of growth with what we do. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you later. See you.